so now we are going to discussing about execution strategy so execution strategy again broadly classified into uh, entry and exit criteria let me write all these things execution strategy is broadly classified okay so what we have to majorly look into uh, execution strategy is nothing but entry and exit execution strategy does that fall under test planning or test planning? yes exactly it's a um, right question it's plan and you know it is fall under test planning okay okay so in our test planning we have seen that you know so test strategy uh, execution strategy and test management process and test environment right so so we already done test strategy and now we are going to discuss about execution strategy okay so let me write all these things one is entry and exit criteria and test cycles and validation validation and defect management test matrix defect tracking and management and reporting okay so what is entry and exit criteria is nothing but okay so when we have to when testers have to accept a future array application for testing okay when we have to accept the application for testing okay and when do we say i have completed my testing okay when do we say we have completed entire our testing when do we say so that's about exit criteria so when we have to accept it for testing when we have to say our testing is completed this is about entry and exit criteria there are certain guidelines before you accept a application for testing you have to make sure that all these guidelines are met okay all these conditions are met before you accept any application for testing you have to make sure that all these conditions are met what are the conditions we have a checklist we are going to discuss that and when it comes to the exit criteria we have to again we have to make certain conditions to say that our testing is completed for example in the entry criteria so the development has to be completed right without the development what is the point in in accepting an application for testing okay so we have to make sure that the entire development is completed the entire code is available and the documentation for the product which is developed is available and all the code is you know is neatly arranged and it is available in the repository and um, you know any uh, any bugs anything is already resolved okay and when all these conditions are met we say we are gonna accept it for testing and once you execute when it comes to the exit criteria once you executed all your test cases so whatever the test cases you already wrote you have executed each and everything okay in that that's one thing and all your test cases are automated and which are up and running and no test cases failing all the defects you raised are fixed and you verified it then you can say we are done with the testing we can say we can exit from the testing okay that's about exit criteria okay so what is test cycles okay is nothing but so depends on the importance of the product and depends on how stable your application which is developed okay you can say so i'm going to execute the entire testing for one time the entire test cycle okay is one for what is the test cycle we have seen right requirements analysis all those things that is testing life cycle so how many times you want to repeat your testing okay how many times you want to repeat your testing is nothing but test cycles okay so based on uh, the stability of your application 
and based on importance of your application you can say so i'm going to execute the entire testing for two times okay one is to make sure that you know all the small small issues and all raised okay or no one is to make sure that all the blocking issues are raised immediately and one is to make sure that so the granular level of testing so whatever it is so i'm going to execute it for two times or one time or three times you know based on the application stability all those things let's say so during the first cycle what you do is you will execute all your test cases am i right you execute all your test cases and you will find a lot of defect and you will raise it and those defects will be fixed and it will comes to you and you will do the uh, defect verification okay and during the defect you know fixing during the defect fixing the developer will be changing the code okay there is a chance that while he changing the code he may broke the other functionalities which we don't know right while he fixing the defect there is a chance that he may he or she may broke the other functionalities right to make sure that what we do in the defect verification we just check whether this particular defect is fixed or not but we don't have much time to verify to test other functionalities working fine or not okay so during the defect verification we we all verify the defect and we say it is working fine and in the other next cycle in the next testing cycle we will again once again we will execute all our functional test cases all our test cases and making sure that the entire application is working fine okay and that's the reason so usually there will be two testing cycles okay but definitely one testing cycle some companies or some people some organizations will follow two testing cycles again that depends on stability of application during the first testing cycle itself during the first testing cycle itself you don't if you don't get much defects okay so that means your application is very much stable then you can avoid the second testing second testing cycle you can avoid it that's about testing cycle is nothing but how many times you have to repeat your testing that's it nothing else okay so all this test planning is uh, developed by a test lead who has at least um, you know 8 to 9 years of experience okay so but it is also important for you to understand what your test lead is doing right and validation and defect management is nothing but okay what is our um, defect management um, system okay what are the you know um, what are the things has to be involved in the defect management system okay so what are the severity levels and prior priority levels okay what are the fields should be there in our uh, defect management system okay something like that will be uh, will be mentioned in the defect management and when it comes to test metrics it's nothing but the testing status okay how many test cases has uh, written and how many are passed okay how we are going to present our test metrics to the customer how we are going to present our testing status to the customer okay that kind of template will be mentioned in the test metrics so what is the uh, number of test cases executed number of test cases failure so number of defects raised okay so all those things will be available in the test metrics and defect tracking and reporting so what is a defect tracking system okay how internally a defect life cycle will be uh, present defect tracking system stages of stages of okay so all those things the stages of defect tracking system all those things we are going to discuss in the you know, it will be available in the defect tracking and reporting okay so so you require to uh, go through this document once again 
and make sure the things which i mentioned are available here okay some of the things you might not understand right away because it is very you know it's at high level but you just go through it and note down the points which are not understand okay which you are not understand and going forward when i uh, cover certain topics you will be able to able to cope up with that you will be able to understand it okay so this is the exit criteria condition which we have to met before we say we completed the testing and these are the entry criteria uh, points which have to make sure that before we say we are going to accept your application for testing and testing life cycle is tied forward that how many number of times you are going to repeat your testing and in the defect management system as i said the severity levels okay and what are the impacts so if if a defect is critical what is the impact if a defect is high what is the impact something like that okay if a defect is you know very low level okay it's a low priority defect low severity defect what is the impact and test matrix okay test preparation and execution status every day we have to send a report to the manager and daily execution status okay so it's it's all about you uh, know giving the status to someone okay so we have to give a status weekly and daily okay this is optional and we have to give the uh, daily execution status like how many test cases we executed today and how many are remaining and how many defects we raised something we have to give some status to the manager or test lead and uh, it's a project weekly status report like as a test um, you know as a test engineer you have to give a daily report to your test lead okay as a test lead he has to give the weekly report for the entire project to the customer or to the project manager and in the defect tracking and reporting you can see what are the so how a defect tracking system will looks like and what are the stages of defect tracking system all those things we are going to will be mentioned in the defect tracking and reporting system okay so do not worry we are going to discuss about each and every you know each and every stage in the defect tracking system you know who are the uh, responsible for that particular stage and all those things we are going to discuss in our defect reporting uh, concept or topic okay so right now this is about test execution strategy sorry this is about execution strategy this is about execution strategy so all these things are which are required which we are you know going to present so we have to present all this information in this required sections so that's about execution strategy so in our next class we'll discuss remaining topics